Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. We're here today with the great and fabulous Mr. Kidwell. Yeah, thank you. How you doing? Oh, not bad. And this is the official unveiling. After years of work, tons of fan mail requests coming in, you know, hey, what's going on with it? Here it is, the world's largest Newton's cradle. It was built by Geek Group members at the Heavy Industries Lab. We've been working on this project for God, how long have we been working on this project? Oh. Since 2006 on this version. At least, yes. Yeah. Um, the Geek Group built the world's largest Newton's Cradle back in 2006, and we wanted to do a bigger, better version, because when we built it, the township inspectors threw a big fit because we hung it from the ceiling joist, because apparently 300 pounds of weight from the ceiling joist is a very dangerous and yeah, horrible they, thing. They, they weren't <laughs> happy with us. They weren't happy 300 pounds from the ceiling pot was terrible. Everybody going to die. But okay. this is it, this is the big one, and it weighs a lot more than 300 pounds. Now, this was built with the assistance of a lot of Geek Group members. Um, mm -hmm. All of their names appear on the project page for this, but I'm not going to name them here because it's too many people. Um, we want to thank 900 Global for the bowling balls, which are special balls made just for this project. Um, normal bowling balls have an offset mass inside them. It's a, a blob about the size of a softball. Mm -hmm. And these balls, we had 35 of them made that were special. They don't have the offset mass. And this is a big deal because it makes the balls homogenous and it makes them work a lot better for a Newton's cradle. Mm -hmm. um, all the balls are matched. They're all exactly the same weight within like a quarter ounce or something like that. It's really, That's really good. close. And we drilled them all. We, we, there's a ton of video of how we built it going through the whole process. And it's, we've got the balls donated from 900 Global. We got the hardware was uh, donated through the Future Girl Foundation. They provide mm -hmm. funding for all the hardware. We want to thank Car Lane for the cable, which is uh, their special safety cable. It's used a lot in machine shops for tool and die work. Yep. And it's, it's really famous stuff. And it works great for this because it doesn't stretch out. Uh, the original prototypes used rope, and we had all kinds of problems. So, Carlene, thank you for your awesome cable. It is mm -hmm. just magnificent. And you'll see a lot of Carlene cable in other Geek Group projects. And the big one, we want to thank 8020. They donated over $20,000 worth of their just amazing industrial erector set extruded aluminum frame, which built all this, all the the angles and the struts and the towers and the cross braces and everything is made completely from 8020. And all, not just the frame itself, but all the ancillary parts, like the casters and the corner braces and, and the little Crusts hangers that we use. Yeah, ev and everything is 8020. You can build anything out of 8020. It, it is a big kid's erector set. So, yeah, thank you guys for your support. And that's, that's the official unveiling. This is, this is it. This is the big, giant geek group Newton's Cradle. So, yeah, it is on public display. In our facility, everybody's welcome to come down and check it out. And this is a portable demo because it's on wheels and we it's can tear it down and it takes a day to put it together. But we are going to be demonstrating this on like tour. It'll be on public display at mm -hmm. science museums and things like that. So if you're interested in having this in your location on public display, send us an email at info at the geek group org. And if you're interested in being a part of building things like this, check out The Geek Group. Come on down, www.thegeekgroup.org, and you can get involved on building big, giant, cool stuff. So mm -hmm. that's the official unveiling. You want to tell them how it works? Go into the science of it? Oh, we can do that somewhat. OK. I'll go to the end. I'll, I'll be your ball puller. OK, you'll okay. be a ball puller. Okay. Which end do you want me at? Um, we'll do it down at this end. OK. We've got more cameras down here. <laughs> Okay, we still, even after everything we've done, are not uh, perfectly lined up all along the way. Yes, we still have some tweaking to do. Yes, and it turns out that when you add this many balls, 
the, the interface where the balls touch each other absorbs a little bit of the energy. Oh, yeah, because so, the, the balls compress. Yes. So when you draw one, go ahead and draw one ball back a good, as far as you're going to want to draw it there. About there's a safe distance. Okay, go ahead. The other ball goes off at the end, and then you can see we lose quite a bit oh, of yeah. energy. Oh, yeah. Well, there's from the so many the ball. balls. I mean, it's, it's the world's largest Newton's cradle, but it's certainly not what you'd want for a high efficiency. Like, if we were building one of these just to demonstrate a Newton's cradle, I'd do it with like five or six balls. I wouldn't do five it with or six 35. Balls. Uh, <laughs> it would work better with balls that are more elastic than this. Uh, elasticity is a thing's ability to return to its original form when it's been deformed. So steel balls would be better than rubber steel balls? Steel balls would be much better than rubber balls. Okay. People think elastic, they think rubber, like rubber bands. It's okay. because a long time ago when they had garters to hold up socks, the trade name for them, what they sold them as was elastic bands. So people okay. think that's what elasticity is, and it's not. Okay. Something's ability to return to its original form is its elasticity, and the more elastic it is, the better it is at doing that. Steel balls are great. Bowling balls, not quite so much. Okay. And, you know, the softer the ball, the less elastic it would be. And these are a really high durometer ball. I mean, they're, they feel really hard. Yes. But this actually compresses quite a bit when, yes. when they hit. Now, when, when the ball hits, there's, there's two different equations that are being dealt with. You have conservation of energy and a conservation of momentum. Okay. Um, force equals mass times acceleration for Newton's what, first law. And second then you have, thing, second yeah. law. All right. And then you have uh, the momentum is one half mv squared. So okay. it's the the two equations together are what's working here. But that's not enough to explain everything that's happening. Um, when you draw one ball back and it hits you're going to conserve energy and momentum and you have a ball coming off at the other end. But there's more than one solution to that equation that'll work, like having our ball rebound with one-third the energy and have the ball at the other end go up with two-thirds the energy would still satisfy the equations. But the other thing that's going on here is when the ball hits, you get a bit of a compression at the, the face of the ball, and that propagates down the line as a shock wave. And that travels at incredibly high. It's, it's the speed of sound in that in medium. the medium. So yeah. whatever the speed of sound in a bowling ball is, that's how fast it's going down the line. It's a lot faster than the speed of sound in air. Yes, it is. <laughs> and the bit where if you draw two balls back, what happens is if you, if you Say the amount of energy that ball number one hits with. We just do one ball for a second. Okay. Say the amount of energy that ball number one hits with is one. Okay. If you draw two balls back, the amount of energy at the interface between this ball and this ball would be two. Okay. Well, you still have that one here. So you got one times the energy here, two times the energy here. That gets propagated through all the way down as a shock wave. Okay. So the energy, you know, the, the ball deforms slightly. So the energy here is going to be two, here is going to be two, all the way down, assuming everything's perfectly elastic. Yeah. So you're not losing energy. In so the, we're, in, we're in theoretical physics land. Yes. Standing on our infinite frictionless plane. Well, yeah. okay. So for this ball here, you have two units of energy pushing that way. A reaction, you got an equal and opposite reaction, you got two units of energy pushing back that way. Where so, does that energy come from? From where you put them in. Okay. Where when it hit, you hit with force two. Okay. Well, force two gets transmitted through this ball. These balls come to a complete stop. Okay. You have an equal and opposite force, so the balls come to rest. The energy. Now, gets, that's the inertia of all this stuff sitting there. Well, no, the, the energy gets put into this ball here. Okay. It gets transmitted to the next ball. You get a, a deformation between these two, and the energy gets transferred, and then a deformation between these two, and the energy gets transferred, and it ripples all the way down. That's okay. the shock wave that goes down. Okay. When it reaches the other end, well, if it was coming up this way. So now we're at the other end. Right. Okay. So you got two units of energy going into this ball. When this one transfers its energy here, this is just enough energy to move these two balls. So it's exactly, right. it's, it's, exact, it's actually a little bit less because there's you friction. Some, and, but that's why you don't get like four balls going up half as much. There isn't enough energy here to move the four balls. 
But there is enough energy to move two. There is, a, there is exactly enough. Okay, well, isn't enough energy to move two balls, let's say, a foot out? Wouldn't that be the same as the amount of energy to move just one ball okay. two feet or three feet or whatever? You have two equations. And the force How does it equals, know? It doesn't know. It's, it's the only solution. Having two balls move is the only solution that satisfies both equations. Okay. All right, so there's a finite number of possible outcomes, and all of them are drop out of the equation um, or drop out of possibility because both mathematical equations have to be satisfied. And from the possibilities that are left, um, like the thought with the ball rebounding on the end, if it comes down here, why doesn't the ball bounce back up? Okay. Well, the amount of energy imparted into this ball is the exact amount of energy that's needed going back to bring this ball to an, a and stop. And no matter how high I lift this or how hard I push or anything, it's always the same. It, it always balances out. Correct. Everything. Now, that's it's really a, amazing when you think about it. Go ahead and draw it back and let it hit. It's, it's, it's so, an amazing bit of, of stuff happening Hold on. There. Don't do it there. It's not going to work with me okay. between them. There. Because so, the amount of energy you hit with you get an equal, equal and opposite, equal amount going back the other way. Well, the amount you hit with is countered by the exact amount to bring that ball to a complete stop. Okay. That's why it doesn't bounce at this end. The energy gets sent you know, by a shock wave. It propagates down. And when it reaches that last ball, there's enough energy sent through the system. Now everything's still moving. It was still a second ago, but I let it go and there's all this. So this is the entropy. This is the friction, this is the, the yes. elastic losses, all, all this stuff. So if I stop that, we, we can show that. Like watch, now it's all, it's all still. Yes. I pull this back. Now everything's moving. Now I stopped it. Yes. And you, everything's moving. You see vibrations and, and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And this, this well. was a big thing when we designed it. Because it's why we went with the car lane cable. Correct. Because rope was too bouncy. It was bouncy. And regular aircraft cable, we had so much weight, because there, there's 12 feet of cable there. And yes. that's a lot of weight up here. Yes. And this moves different from so the ball. There's, want, there's a lot of latency. You want as thin a weight as yeah. you can in the cable, as thin a weight in your hardware down here. Yeah, as, as little as possible. And everything down here that's rigid is fine. Like the, mm -hmm. the eye bolts and the ball, you can, the, the more weight there, the better but as little as possible here all the way up to the top because these, they, they swing and, and it's a problem. So now how does it work like if you have, well, let's say we were doing this with just five balls and I grab three, the middle okay. ball will transfer over. Correct. It, it's, that's the conservation of Conservation of energy. energy. Okay, think about it this way. Things like to stay the way they are. That's Newton's first law. Okay. Things at rest tend to stay at yes. rest. Things in motion, motion in tend motion. to stay in motion. All right. If you just had three balls, if you cut it down, stand on that one and kind of lean back a little. You okay. get four. I get four. That's really heavy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got three. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Right. This is, man. This is bad. This okay. is going to suck so bad. All right. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit. Oh, just a little bit. Be, okay. be gentle. When I do one ball, the middle ball will stay stationary. Yeah. Here, so here. Let, me, let me pull it. Okay. You go okay. ahead. Here, I'm, I'm going to give these a moment. The first person okay. in history to die by a Newton's cradle. All right. So this ball, all the energy that came in here from this ball was transmitted through this ball into this one. Yes. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Take two. Take two. Take now. two? Okay. Now. I got two. All right, now. You ready? So, the, the, well, the net forces on the middle ball were zero. It started at rest, it ended at rest. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Ah! So now two balls come in, two balls go out. This ball started in motion and remained in motion. Yes. Energy was confirmed. Okay, you can get out of Thank there. Thank you. I have like 350 pounds trying to curl up my butt right now, and it's really not comfortable. It's I, like, I, mean, I could just, if I had just done that. <laughs> oh, that would have made for interesting video. <laughs> Anyhow, so the, in the case of three balls, when you draw two balls back, the energy that gets imparted through the system um, is sufficient to move two balls. Two balls moving went in, two balls moving come out. Okay. 
it's coincidental that our middle ball here was moving to start with and continued moving. It's just afterwards. it's still the same number. It's 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 all math. And this still works, works like like if if I go all the way down here, like here's our halfway point. So if I go way over here and grab these balls, and I push them out like that yeah. and get out of the way, it breaks over in the middle. It's Correct. really dirty because they're out of alignment, but you get the idea. It, it, it breaks somewhere around here where the energy matches out, Correct. and this whole center section goes. And it doesn't matter if it's one extra ball or ten extra balls, it's going to balance out in the end. Yes. Okay. The balls that were in motion at the beginning stay in motion. It's like however much energy you put in, you get the same amount out the other end. Cool. Allowing for losses through the system. Okay. So that's, that's the basics of the science behind it. And it gets incredibly advanced. I mean, yes, this, you're it, talking you differential a, equations yeah. and you can do college level math on this. This gets oh, yeah. very People, complicated I'm very sure quickly. Somebody out there has written a whole thesis on this. So yeah. Yes, I, matter of fact I did a web search a little earlier. There's some great stuff out there. Lots of it is very simplistic but there's a couple of sites that really delve into okay. exactly what's going on. And we'll put links to some of that in the show notes we so can that do people that, can check yes. it out. So mm -hmm. yeah, you check out on the website and there will be links to follow up on this and, and maybe some study guides for grade school kids and things like that. Because this is, this is a big classic thing for a lot of different levels of physics. So yeah, that's it. That's the Geek Group's world's largest Newton's Cradle. Thank you to all the members who were such a huge part in building this and all of our awesome sponsors for letting us build such a fabulous toy. It's just cool. It's oh, yeah. Just, I, yeah there, there's science to it and all that, but it's just cool. I mean, it's a Newton's Cradle big enough that, that and this doesn't say a whole lot because I'm a little guy, but it's, it's a Newton's Cradle big enough that you can, you can ride it. You can, <laughs> you can climb right up in here, and I have the world's most uncomfortable hammock. So, yeah. You know what's you, coming, don't I'm you? I'm going to kill you. Oh, man, that sucked. Mr. Kidwell? Oh, yeah, the balls are separated. That's why. I know! You're <laughs> supposed to just, okay, so re reposition yourself so all the balls are together, and we'll do that That'd again. That'd be great if I could feel my legs. You know, <laughs> I, I may never walk again. I'm death by Newton's cradle. I, oh, man, that's frightfully uncomfortable. Okay, this is not going to work because where your butt is, you got a six inch gap. <laughs> So, nope. yeah, you get <laughs> No, nope. it's, it's not, it's, get out of there, it's not gonna work. Get out of there, do you know how hard it was to get in here? I, okay, I'll just grab three <laughs> balls and die. let them go. No, I, hang on, let me, no, I don't wanna die today. I don't, this is gonna suck so no, bad. get out of there. I, if I did three do balls, it. you, do it. Do it! This is gonna hurt. Oh, it's gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. Oh, man. Hey, it worked though. Yeah, it worked. I hate you. You're a horrible fan. <laughs> You're supposed to be my friend. My mom watches these and she's going to yell at you. <laughs> you can't abuse me. I just did. My dad has money. <laughs> you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. That mean guy over there is Paul. And uh, thank you for hanging out with the geek group. We'll have more for you next time. See ya. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. Oh, man, it sucks. All right, that doesn't get any better. No, it don't.